women key his car or actually run him over with their cars. Now, Lindsay wrote to me asking if Brandon could be fixed and felt caught between her concerned sisters and the man she said she loved. Take a look. Jessica and Kelly are my sisters. We're triplets. We're extremely close. My sisters and I are not only triplets, but we were born from the same egg. For people that aren't a twin or a triplet, they may not understand, but I feel like a triplet bond is different. We're best friends. Yeah. You're my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay and Brandon were always happy, but all that changed uh, about a year ago. Lindsay did show me one of the videos. It's him and a girl out in the middle of the woods, and this girl's like stepping on his chest. Brandon wants the best of both worlds, a romantic and sensual relationship with me, and he wants to have women on the side to fulfill these urges that he has. I do feel that Lindsay should just move on in her relationship, and that involves leaving Brandon. The two of you are very concerned about what's going on with your sister, right? Absolutely. And this is your designer purse and, and your designer shoes, and Brandon had a girl damage these and he says that's part of his fetish. He had a woman damage the bag, light it on fire, and burn it. Kelly, what do you think about this? I think it's crazy. You hate to think she's lying. Until she showed me the stuff, that's when I believed it. What kinds of things has he asked you to do that were outside your comfort zone? Kick him in the face, um, of course. Kick him, you know. Kick him in the groin. If this is what he likes, I'm gonna try and please him. My relationship with the triplets is extremely complicated. Lindsay's known about my sexual tendencies since the beginning of our relationship. Lindsay was willing to experiment with me with things that I had paid other women to do. I've never physically cheated on Lindsay with any of these women. Physical pain is really what turns me on. You actually paid the woman to run over you with the car. Uh, I swore, man. My is definitely done. What was your immediate reaction to that? That was a bad idea. If it's such a bad idea, why are you asking me to do it then? But have we ever done it? No, because I know boundaries. If for him, that's what is sexual, and he does that with somebody other than you, then that's cheating. I'm glad somebody else is saying it. It's just because it comes from your mouth, Dr. Phil, and not mine, it's different. But yeah. we've told her this a hundred times. <laughs> you say that you don't like talking to Lindsay's sisters. Why not? It's not that I don't want to talk to them, it's I don't like facing the reality of what this is. What is this? I'm here hoping you could help me find out. You took a woman to y'all's father's shop. When he's in the hospital, dying of cancer. And film her destroying his record collection. Did you become sexually aroused? Sexually aroused, no. You filmed it so he could watch it later. Well, how many times did you watch that video? I didn't get a chance to, and I deleted everything off of his phone. At what point is he likely to decide what kind of rush it would be to have somebody beat the out of you? He already wanted someone to key her vehicle, so it's already getting into her. She knew where I lived, so I didn't feel safe at my own apartment anymore. So he's destroying your stuff one step away from you. Brandon, how do you justify that? It's selfish. I don't have an excuse for it. I can't justify it. I can't. Now, I've made a distinction here between fetish behavior, which uh, can be agreed upon within a relationship between a couple, and other behavior that goes outside the relationship that has nothing to do with the fetish. It's just simply exploitation, victimization, and cheating. And there seems to be an attempt to ball all of these together when they are distinctly separate and apart. Now, you guys have been hearing me talk about this. What do you think about what I'm saying? And what do you think about this conversation so far? Um, I mean, obviously, we agree with what you say. I mean, we've tried to discuss it with actually probably both of them in the past, but it's just getting through to my sister when she continues to condone this behavior and continues to enable this behavior, that's what's frustrating for us. And then, But then a, a week later, she'll come call us crying and say, oh, he did this again. And I, I'm, honestly, I'm tired of hearing about it. So if she's going to stay with him and be with that type of relationship and that's what she wants for her future, then go on, have at it. But we're just not going to be involved in it. All right. how, how do you feel, Kelly? 
I feel like they had a good relationship and Lindsay thinks they had a good relationship, but she never knew they didn't have a good relationship until she found all this out. So she loved Brandon and she loves Brandon currently, but I think she loves the idea of who he was in their relationship before she ever knew anything. Uh-huh. What do you think she should do? <laughs> you know her, you know what yeah. her coping reservoirs are you know, you know what she's able to deal with you know what her vision for a life exactly, is exactly exactly i've told her a thousand times she's a strong woman she's beautiful she's young she has the rest of her life ahead of her she needs to move on from him she's wasting her time with him literally Wait, wasting the time she has on this relationship where she's she can't be happy in this relationship how could you be well it's not only that it's like how do you even if this was to get mended and i pray you get some help brandon and you Lindsay, because you need some help as well for sure but even if this does get mended and somehow they're able to come back together and get back on track how will you ever be able to trust this person again how will you ever be able to to not fear that he's going out and doing this stuff when when he says he's going to the grocery store or something like how will you ever be able to to truly not have to worry about looking through his phone or getting on his computer or looking at his bank statement and seeing who he sent money to or what websites he's gotten on. That's what I fear. There's to me, and trust me, Dr. Phil, I know you know best, but there's no way you can mend a relationship that's been this broken. Mm -hmm. You just think that this is a bridge too far. There's just no No, coming back from this. Mm -hmm. And maybe her and I know too much and that's also an issue as well, but I don't, now what I now I know what I know. I don't feel there's a way to turn around. And and what what do you know that we haven't talked about yet? I mean, let's just get it all on the table here. How's y'all's sex life, if I can be so bold? It's eighty twenty. I do eighty percent of the things he wants to do. He does twenty percent of what I want to do. When you say it out loud like that, that doesn't sound like a good relationship. And later, I cannot control. That's why I don't believe you. Well, you, this you, is why I'm here. You, I want to do whatever it takes because I want to stop. Then on Friday, he's a meth addict. Danny is high around the kids. And blames it on his wife. I'm not saying I'm a better parent. No, you did say you're a better parent. I have it on tape. That's Friday. From 2006 to 2010, I was in the Marines. I was injured in Iraq when our vehicle rolled over. My right arm was crushed and paralyzed. A couple years ago, I had a surgery. They were able to get 80% use back in my arm. After my injury, I was just numb all over. And pain made me feel alive. It's not a correlation from my injury to this addiction. I've had it before, but since the injury, pushing my limits and trying to take more has become the norm. And that's what scares me. I don't feel like that's a reason to go out and do these things with other women. That's not an excuse for his actions or for him to lie to me. We've been talking with Lindsay, her boyfriend of two and a half years, Brandon, and her triplet sisters, Kelly and Jessica, who say they're tired of hearing Brandon's excuses for acting inappropriately with other women. What has Lindsay told you that we haven't brought up yet? I mean, let's, hell, let's just, we've opened this can, let's eat the whole thing. I mean, I think everything, everything that happened in the relationship we know after the breakup a year ago, because we couldn't believe it. No, they never broke up. Well, true, they never yeah. broke up. She was yeah. always with them. But I feel like we know everything. You brought up everything. I can't think of one thing that. Yeah, it's just the the paying women for inflicting pain. It's it's the stuff the that my sister's done, cheating. which is kind of shocking. It's the it's the reaching out outside the relationship. I mean, that's it's sad, but it's also like paying. It's not even just designer goods, like you're saying, Doctor Paul. It's like paying rent payments, paying car payments, like mm-hmm. just spending random money on on random women like for what purpose what like what are you getting from that i don't understand and you get a thrill out of paying money to women right yes it's not just what happens it's just the fact that you're paying money to women yes sir and what do you say to yourself about that that's exhilarating i don't know if it's an insecurity i don't know if it's um a power thing um after um shame is the one thing that I, I i do feel very shameful and i am very remorseful for the things i do i am um i just i don't know what other than 
feeling the fact that I it empowers me, makes me makes me feel good. I don't know. So, how's y'all's sex life, if I can be so bold? I mean, we actually have a good relationship. Like Brandon keeps everything very exciting, very fun. I mean, it's. 80 20 i do 80 percent of the things he wants to do he does 20 percent of what i want to do but i mean we have a good relationship we when you say it out loud like that that doesn't sound like a good relationship <laughs> 80 20. when you say 80 percent of the things he wants to do so you're okay, you're, 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 at, you're at home at night and you decide, yeah, we're, okay. at, we're at home and okay um you know do you want do you want me to kick it do you want me to crush you? Like, you know, what do you want me to do towards you? It's, it's. But I would also say that it has become a point to where would you agree or disagree that we both do enjoy. No, I enjoy it. Absolutely. I'm not saying I don't. I do. Like, at this point, I'm two and a half years in. I would not know how to be in a normal relationship anymore. That's, it's just the truth. I wouldn't. But. There's also things that you like that. Yeah. Know, I mean, what he does to me, I enjoy, but it's 20% of the time. I mean, we yeah. have a different relationship. It's it's not, you know, normal, but it, it works for us. And Brandon always keeps everything exciting. I mean, it's not like I'm like, oh, God, I have to do this again. It's like, okay, yeah, like he makes it fun. And how is that fun for you? I mean, you, you say I stand on his face or I stand on his throat or I kick him in the groin or whatever. How how is over two and a half years? How has that become fun for you? How have you changed that perceptually in your mind? Because it wasn't at first, right? No, I mean at first I was like, "Are you sure? Like I don't really want to do this, you know." But but then it's like if I don't do it, he's gonna go do it with someone else. So I don't want that to happen either. He does that anyways, Lindsay. It's not well, like he's I mean, he hasn't for you. met with anyone in over a year, but what? He hasn't met, physically met with anyone in over a year. But he's texted and That's, talked. I know. He's he. Are you kidding me? Don't try and make him look good when he's still and doing I'm, it. I'm, I'm not going to take any validation or I'm not going to try to, hey, add a boy because there's none here to have. I hope more than anything that you are not only enjoying this just because it is something for me. I, if that is the case, that's not enough for you. It's not. It's, and it will never be. And I, I can't honestly say that I want that for you. I don't. Well, I that's really why I'm asking, what is in this for you? You, you said at first you didn't like it. How did this evolve in your you experience? You do something for two and a half years every day. I mean, you get to like it. Like, you just, I don't know. I mean, it's literally all I've done for the past two and a half years. You just... If it's what you're going to do, you may as well enjoy it. Like, and I do. I enjoy it. And what is the enjoyment you get out of kicking him in the face? <laughs> is it because he gets enjoyment and that makes you happy? I don't know. Or? I mean, I guess. I don't know. It's not like I'm like, he's like backing away. He's bringing his face to me. Like, like to my he's shoe. What your enjoyment is. Why I know. Would you enjoy I, I don't know. So I guess I enjoy it because he enjoys it. But what is your experience at the time? Is what I'm asking you. My experience is, you can tell he enjoys it. So I'm like, yes, if he's, this is really what he wants. Like I wanted, I want to please him. Like I want to make him happy. He's my boyfriend and I love him. He yeah, doesn't he has have it. boundaries. He has literally zero. I know that. He's willing to trash your car, your belongings. What makes you think you can't be next? I wanted to read part of a statement here uh, from a, a friend of Lindsay's. Brandon is not who I thought he was. He uses the fact that he is a disabled Marine injured at war to get people to trust and think he is a good person. He is a manipulator, a pathological liar, and a selfish person. Brandon consistently put down and disrespected Lindsay by calling her names such as bitch and stupid. Lindsay went above and beyond to do everything she could for Brandon. Brandon still went to the extreme with his sexual fetishes, cheating on her with 50-plus women. 
Brandon had someone run over him with her car and ask women to vandalize Lindsay's vehicle. Lindsay will never be able to fully trust Brandon again. Now, that's part of a statement from a friend of yours. 50 plus women. And you say, and you say well, he hasn't been can, with anybody in the- She can in, put herself in that category because she was getting money from Brandon too. I mean, it's like everyone wants to play a victim here, but they're not complaining when they're getting money. Do you see the the, the issue I keep bringing up is boundaries. He yeah, doesn't he has have been. boundaries. He has literally zero. I know that. And he's he's willing to trash your car, your belongings. What makes you think you can't be next? I don't know. I mean, I very well could be. Be honest with yourself. You say he hasn't been with anybody else for a year. I don't believe that. Well, in person, he's he just had someone text him on Saturday on the ride up here. But what, I mean, why do you still believe he hasn't been with anybody in person women. for a year? Because he told me, and I want to trust oh, him. Oh well, as long as he said he had, no, I didn't know that. Okay. That's the relationship, literally. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I want to trust that he's like on the right path. That's why I'm here. I want to put this out in the open. I want to do whatever it takes because well, I don't want to go. Why are you telling her you haven't been with anybody in a year? I have not physically met up with women like I had weekly in oh, in almost a year. In almost a year. Have I engaged in conversation? Have I sent money? Yes. I've not physically met up with these people. And yes, that is a big step for me. And I would love to go further. But I cannot honestly say the next week, next month, that I wouldn't because I cannot control. I cannot control. That's this. why I don't believe you. Well, you're, this you're, is why I'm here. I want to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Well, whatever it takes is being 100% honest and forthcoming. And you're telling me I can't control myself, but yet I have restrained myself for the last year. Which is it? You've restrained yourself for the last year or you can't control yourself. Those two sentences do not live in the same world. I, you either can't control yourself or you've controlled yourself for the last year. One of those is true. One of them is not. I have moderated myself. Does that make sense? Is that a better statement? I, I, it's a better attempt. Mm -hmm. I mean, he still reached out for conversations. He still sent money to these women. And he says he hasn't so met up I, with no, anyone. I do I not mean, have control. I don't. Yeah. But I am sure as hell trying to do whatever it takes, coming on the show, putting all this out here, because I want to stop. I've gotten really good at running why do you from stop? everything. If this is gratifying to you, why do you want to stop? To what point? I'm going to be 50 years old, still continuing to hurt people, still continuing to lie, still continuing to do things that I know are not right and I feel shameful later. No, I don't want that. You want to stop lying, but you don't want to stop the fetish. You just oh, want to stop I, lying. I, I would love, I don't feel the fetish is a problem. I feel the lying and trying to go about it the way that I have for as long as I can remember. That is the issue. But you fully acknowledge that Practicing this fetish behavior with her is not enough. You have to have other women involved, at least up until now. I, I don't, I've never fully in, been involved with someone like Lindsay, so I've always went elsewhere. I always have. And so I use that as a validation of that's why I'm still doing it. I am fully happy with what Lindsay and I do. Well, based I, on results, that's not true because I you're reaching that. out to other women. Because if you were fully happy with Lindsay, you wouldn't be you, you, you wouldn't be facilitating I, I this agree. with other women. I agree. I I don't know how to stop. I don't. Well there are some tough decisions to make here. We'll talk about settle for. Is there seriously something wrong with him? Feel yes, like there's seriously he... something wrong with him. So if he gets help, do you feel like it's possible that we move forward? You know, Lindsay, the thing I want to be very clear with you about is we're talking about two distinct categories 
of behavior and values here. One is the fetish behavior, and that's between the two of you. You're adults, and, and that's your decision. When it gets to the point where you're having a car run over your arm, then that's not okay. Um, that's not what sadomasochistic behavior is about. That you're, you've gone beyond fetish behavior, and you're now into self-destructive behavior that's toxic and pathological. So you've gone outside the bounds of what would I think people would normally define as sadomasochistic behavior and become self-destructive. And you need to be aware that you know people might look at a sadomasochistic relationship and say, that's sick. That's people's judgment. But that's between the two of you. But when it gets to the point that it's inflicting injury and putting lives at danger, then that's no longer fetish behavior. That's self-destructive behavior. When he's having his arm run over by a car, um, that can cause paralysis. It can cause a blood clot, which can cause death. That can cause, I mean, that's, that, that's not fetish behavior. That's just stupid. And that's, that's stupid behavior. And that means there's some, something in there filter-wise that's not right because he's obviously not a stupid person. So something's distorting your perception, right? To, for that to be okay. And you know, you said immediately when you did it, bad idea. Your filter cleared right up because you're not a stupid person. That's just a self-destructive behavior. That's not a smart thing to do. And you know that intellectually, correct? Yes, sir. So even the bounds of the fetish behavior have been, bounds of the fetish behavior have been violated. But let's just, let, let's set that, extreme behavior aside and just say the two of you have a, a, a sadomasochistic sexual relationship and say we're not going to pass any judgment on that whatsoever if that's what floats your boat then get a paddle okay but then there's a whole other category of behavior and that's integrity does your partner have the emotional integrity to be honest with you, to be truthful with you, to be predictable with you, to be someone that you can count on, to not betray you. And he says, I haven't been with anybody physically for almost a year. But he says, I have been in contact with other women by text, phone, internet, yeah. whatever. I have been sending them money. <laughs> that's not okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. I right. mean, that's, it's like you can just cheat on me a little bit. Mm -hmm. you, you just cheat on me sort of. Um, are, are, the question becomes, what are you willing to settle for? Because you teach people how to treat you. And you get in this life what you're willing to, to ask for and what you're willing to settle for. And he clearly needs help. He knows he needs help. You know he needs help. You know he needs help. You know he needs help. People driving by out on Melrose know he needs help. Hell, this isn't a, it. Lassie could figure that out. You know that, right? Yes, sir. You've said that. That's why you're here. And the question is, do you want to continue to be violated in hopes that he will eventually get that and and this relationship will be salvageable? No, and what I mean, is your answer to that question? No, that's why we're here. Do you believe this is an addiction or do you believe it's just him being a man and going after what he wants? Like, is there seriously something wrong with him to where he's doing this. There, there's seriously something wrong with him. I mean, it's obvious. really, that's your question? Yeah, because I feel yes, like there's seriously he, something wrong with him. Okay, so if he gets help and and you feel like it's possible that we move forward, like, am I ever going to get this out of the back of my mind? Are we going to be able to 
be in a relationship happily and not have to constantly worry about this? Well, there's the $64,000 question, and I'm going to answer that right after the break. Then on Friday, he's a meth addict. When I use, I'm very high functioning. I run the business. And blames it on his wife. He says she stresses him out and forces him to use. Besides my drug addiction, I'm a better dad than Elisa is a mom. You were drunk and vomiting in front of the children. Maybe you're not as high functioning as you think you are. I'm not saying I'm a better parent. No, you did say you're a better parent. I have it on tape. That's Friday. And on Monday, he's 22. You game all day. And lives with grandma. You've never met your girlfriend in five years. Years. We're just trying to help. I know, and I'm completely calm right now. Well, hey, sweetheart, I don't care whether you're upset. My job is to get you moving. That's Monday. Closed captioning provided by... You love your pet like family, so feed them like family with the natural ingredients you trust from Blue Buffalo. And now, save on blue treats at Petco. You ask me, is there a chance here, if, if there's something wrong with him, is it something wrong that's fixable? Yeah. And if it's fixable, then can we have a relationship that is sustainable across time, we have a happy life together, have a family, can, can we move forward? I, I'm going to answer that for you and um, tell you... Um, this is a very high risk situation. Um, if you were my daughter, I would tell you not to walk away from him. I would tell you to run away from him. I would tell you to get as far away as fast as you possibly can because this is a high risk situation and the chance of this coming to resolution in any kind of time frame that you would would want uh, is very, very, very low. Um, because I'm not sure what he considers fixing is what you consider fixing. I'm not talking about the fetish, I'm talking about the absence of moral compass here. Uh, and Brandon, I don't know why you're doing what you're doing, but I have some theories about it. You're not really doing anything to work on this, correct? No, sir. Uh, which is the reason I would tell you not to walk, but to run. He knows what's going on. He knows he's hurting you. He knows you're in pain. He knows he's going behind your back. He knows he's violating you. He knows he's out of control, and he's not doing one damn thing to try and fix it. That's true. Mm -hmm. And to me, that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. He didn't write in. You did. You guys asked for the help, not him. He's just here. Well, I'm back with Lindsay and Brandon, who are in a two and a half year long relationship. If you use the word relationship in the broadest sense of the word, her triplet sisters, Jessica and Kelly, are here because they're supporting Lindsay. They're concerned about her well being, they're concerned about what she has been living and what she may be letting herself in for. Uh, Brandon is obviously a very intelligent and charming guy. And if you met him and had lunch with him, played the round of golf, uh, hung out with him, you'd think, you know, what a nice guy. But you have some... Um, atypical urges, motivations, and proclivities that are invading uh, this relationship. You agree with that characterization? Yes, sir. Uh, you have some atypical 
motivations, impulses, and proclivities that are actually putting your health and well-being at risk because well, you've made so. some decisions that have actually created some dangerous situations. Yeah, um, which, and you said you couldn't control that impulse. But there are two things I would highly recommend for you, and I'm, I'm going to make them available to you. One is you do need professional help. Um, not because of the fetish, but because you violated the boundaries of the fetish and put yourself in danger. And, I, and I'm willing to arrange that for you, to get you some professional help, to kickstart you on, on the road. And I also think you need to have your brain uh, seriously evaluated to see whether or not you have some type of anomaly from your traumatic brain injury that has changed your pleasure centers in some way, have scrambled the neurotransmitters in the neocortex of your brain, the uh, your amygdala, uh, the cingulate gyrus of your brain in, in such a way that your impulse control and what it takes for you to move the needle has really been distorted. And I can tell you that I am highly suspect that that is true. And I also know that at your age, there is tremendous progress that can be made to heal that, if, if that is in fact the case. The brain's a very resilient organ. And I, I would rule that out because if you don't rule that out and there are uh, anomalies in your brain, all the talking therapy in the world is going to be building a house on sand. So I think you need to look at that first. And I'm going to call uh, my dear friend, Dr. Daniel Amon, at Amon Clinics and see if we can arrange for you to go to the Amon Clinic and, and have your brain evaluated there uh, and see if, in fact, there are some things that, that you can do First, is there damage? Are there some anomalies? And if so, uh, what kind of protocol would, would change that for you? And if I were you, I would want that information as soon as possible, real fast. Because if that's true, a lot of this could be involuntary for you. I mean, you're like a passenger on a runaway train. If part of your brain is overspeeding and part of your brain is asleep, it needs to be awake. We need to find that out real fast because uh, you could be like back in row 14 on a runaway train not up there steering this thing and in in fairness to you I, I think that needs to be evaluated and then if that's true and those things are addressed then you know the cognitive behavioral therapy changing what you say to yourself your internal dialogue could have a profound effect uh, across time and I would watch very closely to see whether he really immerses himself in that process or whether he doesn't um, and find well, out what's... According to you, I shouldn't be around for the process. Exactly right. What you're saying? I mean, exactly yeah. right. I, I would let him go do this and, and see what you find out. Or you're going to spend 10, 15 years dealing with exactly what you're dealing with right now. in my opinion and I am not the repository of all knowledge I don't have the answers to every question but to me this isn't a close call I am however going to make available to you what I believe are the most profound steps you can take to get to the bottom of this and I, I appreciate that I will make that do. happen straight away I'm, I'm, I'm calling I, I, I'm calling your behavior uh, what it is. I'm, I'm not talking about you and your worth and value as a human being. I'm labeling your behavior as unacceptable. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm making no judgment of you as a human being. I'm saying your behavior is out of bounds, unacceptable, lacks integrity, and you should reject it on its face. If, if he can come back to you and an independent professional can tell you that he's done what he needs to do, then you can reconsider this. Maybe she'll be available then, maybe she won't. But you need to do this first. 
And if you care about her, you'll go do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Have I been clear? Yes. Have I been clear? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to thank all of my guests today. And a special thanks to Dr. Daniel Amon and the Amon Clinics uh, for working with Brandon. Uh, Amon Clinics are spread across the United States. They have a dozen clinics and do some of the finest work on brain evaluation and rehabilitation in the country. They have one of the biggest databases. They've worked with the NFL. They work with the military. They have one of the largest databases uh, to really get a baseline on brains and then set up the protocols to do the reparative work that's necessary that's around. And I have great respect uh, for Dr. Amen. He's a good friend and, and one that I respect highly. Uh, his current book is The End of Mental Illness. Uh, and the title is because he believes that the brain function is what really underlies so much of what we now consider to be psychiatric uh, in nature. I highly recommend it. It's a great read. Uh, for more information about today's show, the outlets, I'm always on Facebook talking about these things after the fact, hearing what you guys have to say and chatting it up. You can also find me other places, Twitter and Instagram. That's all for today. Don't forget to tune in to Robin's podcast. I've got a secret. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.